Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Thank you so very much for being here. In today's video, we are going to be doing a July reading wrap up and a August TBR. Gosh, dude, I freaking hate the summer ending. I am a summer girly and every August and September, I am fighting for my life for it to like still be summer vibes. Like I feel like there's a small majority of people who still want it to be summer. And then the majority of the people are already like buying fall stuff and are <laughs> getting prepared for all that. Okay, that's not what this video is about. I just love summer and I never ever ever want it to end. Without further ado, let's get right into the video. So if it weren't for Goodreads TBH, I would not be able to remember what I read in July. I mean like if I really really tried, yes, but I love Goodreads because it like tracks it all for me. If you're interested to see what I'm currently reading, what I want to read, what I have read, it's all in my Goodreads organized for you. So. If you want to follow me definitely go check it out it's down in my description i love finding people and like becoming friends with them and like seeing what they're reading anyways the first book was the magnolia inn by caroline brown this was a four star read for me it was so much freaking fun to listen to i actually didn't read it it was the first audiobook that i listened to in the month it was so much fun to listen to. I was able to listen to it really, really fast. When I was showering, washing the dishes, like whatever it is, I was listening to that audiobook. It was so much fun to listen to. It was one voice actress playing all the roles, and I think that actress did such a good job. So she was a voice actress for our main character, Jolene, and also our main character, Tucker. But she was also like the voice actor for like her aunt Sugar, and I can't remember her uncle's name, and then Sugar's three best friends who are freaking amazing and so freaking funny to listen to. They gave me like the ultimate like unhinged ants who like to speak their minds but like they're really fun and can be like dirty and just like funny and just like lift up your spirits that's really how they like they made me feel it is based about a bnb a bed and breakfast sugar and her husband own the bnb but they decided to retire and this is like all on the synopsis don't worry i'm really big on spoilers so it won't be any spoilers they decide to sell the magnolia inn to Jolene and to the uncle's like nephew and so they end up deciding to buy an RV and just like travel across the country. So then Jolene immediately loves the idea of owning the B&B but the nephew is like no this is disgusting. So Tucker comes in, he saves the day. So the three aunts are keeping company to Jolene. They were so much freaking fun to listen to. They would have like Sunday dinners where they would talk about all the yummy southern food like it made me just like want to be in the south they would say the sentence like oh we're by the bayou i don't even know what a bayou is i think it's a pond i think it's water i don't know but it was so much freaking fun to listen to these southern accents i eat it up i love southern accents so freaking much <sighs> i get riled up <laughs> it was just so good and it was romance and it was a slow burn tucker and jolene both had a past but tell me why this was like the most healthiest fucking relationship I've ever read about. I have read books where they are pissing me off because they're not communicating, they're not respecting each other's boundaries, they're not thinking about their own trauma and how they have to get past that. They were so like healthy. They were so freaking healthy and like I've had books where they piss me off because they're just not communicating. This book was not like that at all. Like it was very much a perk on how they will communicate. So no! Why did my voice sound like that? Okay, so now to the second and third book that I read in July. <laughs> I literally talked about this entire series for over 40 minutes in my reading vlog. So I am not going to do that again. If you want to see like in-depth like reactions, opinions, just thoughts, all of that on the entire series please go check out my reading vlog i had so much fun making that reading vlog five star series absolutely loved this series so freaking much i read the first book in june so that's why i'm not holding it i just i ate it up i i ate it up but there's certain five star reads that just like do something to your heart and when i think about the entire series it gives me that feeling it was so, so good. It gave off the 
ultimate summer vibes being at a beach house being at the beach being in a pool being with your family being with people that you love also it is a love triangle and ugh, i didn't know i was a fan of love triangles until i read this freaking series the series made me extremely happy it did everything that i was in the mood for it is easily my favorite ya series easily my favorite like summer series it's just it was just so good easily became my favorite series ever if you haven't read it already please go do please please go buy the series so then to the last book that i read in july i read the shake up by evie eve evie 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 -E, michelle evie Eve, I don't know. <laughs> I was able to buy the first book for free on Stuff Your Kindle Day. And the book is like a little bit over 100 pages. So I knew that I had, I think it was like less than a week before the end of the month. I like the idea of starting a new book on the first day of the month. I have been trying to start books in the beginning. I mean, just as this month. And I don't know if I'm ever going to do it again. But either way, I just needed to find a book that was just going to be short. And I would be able to finish before the end of the month. So oh my god dude i freaking <laughs> that literally scared me so bad i literally locked these cats out and they <laughs> oh my god <laughs> how the fuck did you i literally locked these cats out because they kept making noise and aria ran in how did i not hear that that's scary that literally scared me so bad. I saw, <laughs> I saw her run in and I was just so confused. I was like, I closed the door. I think that I didn't latch it to where I hear the click. <laughs> she pushed it open. But how did I not hear that? That's actually terrifying. How did I not hear the door open? I think I maybe did turn my head when I heard it, but I didn't see the door because it was just slightly open. Okay, and that was a little bit ago. That I turned over there. Okay. The shakeup. Okay. Oh my god. That threw me off. Um, so what I was saying was I was wanting to start a book on the first. So I needed something that was going to be fast. That's exactly what I was able to find. This book is just a little bit over 100 pages. And it was so freaking good. This book just went straight to the point. It gave me exactly what I wanted. But they were also healthy. And that's what I love. I hate when relationships... Are toxic and they just don't freaking communicate but like i said i really want to read magnolia parks so it's a small town roommate romantic comedy it's the first book in the capricorn <laughs> i don't know why i'm saying it like that it's the first book in the capricorn cove series there's 11 books in the series but hear me out hear me out the first book was just a little bit over 100 pages the second book is like 80 something pages. I really loved the first book. It was really, really good and super spicy. He was just really charming and like he knew what he was doing. And if you know what I mean. And communication, like we love it. They did that. Her, the main character's name is Anika. The guy main character's name is Mac. They both have best friends that I loved and they also talked about some friends in the book and I'm assuming the next 11 books are like with the friends so it's all in the same world. Obviously it's a series, that's a series, that's a series too, yeah, use that. The main character Anika owns a restaurant with her best friend and it was so freaking cute to read about Anika just being like a master chef, like she was a chef, she's a head chef of the restaurant that was so much fun to read about too but if you're just wanting like a palate cleanser something that's just gonna be fast quick easy to read and romance and spicy and just like all everything that you love in a romance if you want to read something but like 100 pages then definitely i recommend the shake up and possibly the entire series too okay now what if i just end the entire video like this now to the books that i want to read <laughs> in august so you know me you know i've been saying that i don't want summer to end so i'm still wanting to read summer books i have just been in the mood for romance and i'm surprised that i still am i really hope that i don't burn myself out on romance books but this is yet again another romance i'm enjoying it while it's happening ah! 
I really want to read It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey and when you are in the mood for a specific book and you keep thinking about it like for multiple multiple days and then when you finally are able to pick it up it's just so much fun so I am waiting to read this till tomorrow I only have one more day I just there's something satisfying about starting a new book on the first day of the month I don't know I've never done it before and now all of a sudden I do so this is the first book and you could say like a series the second one is hook line and sinker they're both standalones but i can't read hook line and sinker without reading this one also i've just heard nothing but great things about this one i also heard it's spicy i also heard it's grumpy versus sunshine also it's based in washington state and i live in washington state it's a small town he's a fisherman she's like a fashionable influencer she had too much champagne and was out of control at a rooftop party and her stepfather decides enough is enough so he cuts her off and sends her and her sister to learn some responsibility running their late father's dive bar in Westport, Washington. Ayo! So Piper hasn't even been in Westport for five minutes when she meets big bearded sea captain Brandon Taggart, Taggart, Taggart? who thinks she won't last a week outside of Beverly Hills. <laughs> that sounds so much freaking fun. Also, I'm in love with Tessa Bailey. Have I read any of her books? No, but I'm already such a big fan of her book and her work just because everyone and their mother has just been raving about her books and I need to read one of them. I need to before the summer ends. So also, please do not read anything. Opens my eyes more. Okay, it's a little bit under 400 pages the last book is the last page is 385 perfect 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 i want something that's going to be quick fast get to the point i mean actually 400 pages is that going to do that i hope it does if she does it right you know you know i just don't want a book to uh, you know what it is i have trauma okay it's really not be dramatic where is the book all i want for christmas by Ma maggie knox this book right here, this is why I've been thinking about in the back of my head. This book, it was so bad. It was toxic. It wouldn't get to the freaking point. It annoyed me so much. So when I know that a book is 100 pages, I know it's going to get straight to the point and it's not going to do what that book did. And so when I see that a book is a little bit closer to 400 pages, I'm hoping it's not going to do what that book did. But if the author does it right, it's they're not going to make me mad. Like they're going to, if they do it right, they do it right. You know what I mean? A little bit traumatized. I literally read that over six months ago. I read that during the winter and I'm still like, please, I don't want a book that's going to be like that. So doesn't mean if a book is going to be 300, 400, 500 pages, doesn't mean it's going to be like that. That book specifically just did not sit well with me personally. Oh my God. I'm so excited. What is this book going to like take me? I'm so excited. I can't go to the beach, but I can go to the beach in my head in a book. So me and her in August. Yeah, baby my choice for an audiobook so i find that one physical book one audiobook and one book on my kindle is the perfect recipe for me to always be reading listening to something because i definitely have a phone addiction and i need to stop so ways to help me not be on my phone is to read on my a physical book kindle or an audiobook so the audiobook that i'm actually currently listening to i think i'm like 50 pages in it's every last secret by a.r tori tor and so far, so good. It's giving me rich people who will get what they want when they want and they're creepy. Let me read you a little bit of the synopsis because me just saying that they're rich, scary people really doesn't do much. So it says, welcome to the neighborhood. Watch your husband, watch your friends, and watch your back. You see what I'm saying? It says, Cat Winthrop. Cat Winthrop. Cat Winthrop. Cat <laughs> Winthrop. There we go. Kat Winthorpe has worked hard to get what she has, a gorgeous home, social standing, and William, her successful, handsome husband. Then, a friendly new couple moves into the estate next door, while cautious, a good neighbor like Kate greets them with open arms and warm hospitality. Nina Ryder, so it's dual POV, isn't a fellow lady of leisure, a life coach with off-the-rack dresses, personal issues, and a husband she hasn't delivered. She's anxious to move up in the world. This beautiful new town is a step in the right direction. It's also making Nina aware of what she doesn't have, namely William. Yeah, it's creepy, like she wants to steal a husband. When Nina's 
imputation escalates into obsession, it's just a matter of eliminating a few obstacles to get the life she wants. The life next door. As Nina's secret fixation grows, so does her friendship with Kat. But beneath their cordial interactions is a wealth of temptation, secrets, and toxic jealousy. For both women, the desire for a perfect life can turn perfectly dangerous. Isn't that weird? So you might be wondering, Andy Sal, why are you shocked while you're reading the synopsis? It's because, like I said, that one TikToker said she loved it, checked if it was on Kindle Unlimited, saw that I can listen to it, started listening to it. Like I don't even like read the synopsis. But reading that synopsis, kid you not, it does intrigue me and it like pushes me to listen to it. Sir, if you want rich white women to fight over a man and do anything, if you know what I mean, to get that what they want, then listen to it with me. We can buddy listen to it. Then to the book that I want to read on my Kindle is One Night in Foxbrook by Eve Alexander. Oh, this is another girl. Oh my god, that literally was the same author. It's Eve, the spelled the same way, I don't know how to pronounce it, Eve Alexander. This is also a little bit under 100 pages. I just need something that's going to get straight to the point. I don't know why I'm doing this, it just feels right. I just need something that's gonna get straight to the point, it's gonna get straight to the cut, but it's gonna do it in a right way, like the other Eve Michelle did. And less than 100 pages, I can literally read that in two days. Like, it makes me feel extremely accomplished and it helps me to keep reading more, even though they're shorter, shorter books. It's called A Second Chance Small Town Short and Steamy Rom-Com. So it's exactly like the other book that I read and I'm in the mood for it. Um, it says, Chef Ben Walker gets the call to help a VIP dinner at Foxbrook Manor. He doesn't expect to run into old flame Leah Perry. She's all grown up and even more attractive than when they were teenagers. But she hasn't forgotten what happened 10 years ago and she definitely hasn't forgiven him. Hardworking Leah may be named after a princess, but she's still waiting for her prince. Ben was her brother's best friend. Brother's best friend. I love brother's best friend so much. Her first kiss and her first love, but he was also a liar. Their kiss was nothing but a bet. Aww. Now forced to work together under pressure, sparks fly. Will one night give Ben the second chance he needs to prove himself and win back Leah's heart? Or will fate strike back and their love be lost in a galaxy far, far away? One night Foxbrook is a short and sizzling second chance romantic comedy with no cheating, no cliffhanger, and a guaranteed happily ever after that's out of this world. Yeah, baby! I love that. No cheating. Literally, if it said with cheating, I would have thrown it at my wall. I hate cheating tropes. Why? Why? I love talking to y'all. I love chit chatting about the books that I've read and want to read. I really hope that you enjoyed watching. I enjoy making these videos so much, so I really hope that you enjoyed watching as much as I enjoyed making this video. If you have read any of the books that I talked about or if any of the books are on your TBR, please comment down below. I would love to talk to you guys about books. It's my favorite thing. I mean, make videos constantly about talking about books, so please help a friend out. I need people to talk about books with. Sure, isn't that kind of sad? I need people to talk about books with so I make videos on the internet to talk about books with, that, that's kind of sad. If it wasn't a book, it wouldn't be. So let's just imagine my life as a book. Ah. Okay, thank you so very much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.